All right, guys, we have done it. That was extremely difficult. Took a ton of time. Let's take a look. Here it is. We finally have the new M2 MacBook Air. We are super excited to check this thing out. In this video, we are gonna be doing a teardown opening this thing up, seeing how the design is, what Apple has changed. We're gonna peel back some stickers, look at the cooler in here, uh, and check out the SSDs, whether it's a single NAND, which we're pretty sure it is going to be. And dang, first impressions in my hand. Vadim, I think you were absolutely right. Was it thin? It is thin, it yeah. is light, and look at that beautiful midnight color. Now everybody's talking about fingerprints. Let's see, oh, there's my first fingerprint right there. And I just cleaned my hands before this video. Okay, oh, that's I like this thing. Oh, I uh, color. The color is beautiful. I'm not a fan of blue, but this blue is a really nice one. It is really dark. It is light. Uh, I don't know if I should open it yet. Maybe we'll, we'll wait a little it, bit. Man. It Ooh. is way thinner than in you know the photos. You can't really tell there. This is a beautiful device. This is a 2022 device. Now let's set this down and let's grab the cable. Beautiful braided cable. You do not get this with a more expensive MacBook I Pro. Love that. We have it color matched. We have MagSafe on here. And then that plug is white because that's where it connects with the adapter. Now we have the base model. So this is the cheaper one that doesn't come with the dual charger or the fast charger, but that's fine. You can buy an anchor one that's also small and fast charger. We'll leave a link down below. Let's grab our iFixit kit. I absolutely love this as all the tools we need. Uh, it's not too expensive. I'll link it down below as well to Amazon. Let's flip this bad boy over. Wow, there's actually only four screws on this thing. This might be the easiest MacBook to take apart ever. And as I unscrew this thing, I have to let you guys know about our giveaway. We are giving away a brand new M2 MacBook Air. We ordered four of them, so I'm gonna send one of these to one of you guys, and it doesn't matter where you are in the world. I don't care if you're in Europe, I will pay the import duties, the shipping costs. If you guys wanna win one of these, we are gonna be putting out videos during this launch week, and then on the 25th of July, we will be choosing a winner randomly on a video, and all you have to do is be subscribed and comment down below. You can comment on each video to get more chances, but multiples won't help you. So watch our videos, comment, and one of you guys are going to get a brand new MacBook. Now let's see if it just lifts up or if they have those locks there. All right, so the back is not lifting up. So it does have those little locking channels. Oh. All right, moment of truth. Let's see this beauty. Nice, okay, that is clean. That's one thing we love about Apple, uh, especially on the newer products. The insides are just as nice looking as the outsides. Let me go ahead and spin this around so I'm looking at it with the right orientation. And there are a lot of very interesting things here. The first thing I notice is the speakers. We have these two large drivers up top. These are the whole modules. And if I press down, well, they don't press at all. That means it's not bottom firing. Uh, it is actually firing through the vents over here. So it's gonna bounce up through um, the kind of the vents against the screen and towards your face and also through the keyboard. Now we have the dual woofers that are large. We also have the tweeters and the speakers should sound much better than before. We will do a full test in our comparison to the M1 MacBook Air. And right next to it, we have these gold or brass sections. Now these should be the antennas. I see the little cables running to there. And then we have this kind of sticker that covers it, but certain sections are cut out. That's to make sure you get the best signal. In the center here, we have a protector for the ribbon cable, and we can actually see the ribbon cable right over here at the bottom. I'm sure Apple redesigned it to get rid of any of the issues they had before with that disconnecting. All right, guys, I am even more excited about this machine now, looking at these ports. This reminds me of the Mac Studio when we did those teardowns. We have screws with all these covers, and each one of these ports 
It is a separate piece that can be unscrewed, easily replaced, and has a ribbon cable that connects to the motherboard. So as far as repairability, it'll be much easier and much cheaper to do that. And the same thing goes with the headphone jack. It's a separate module here. With that, it looks like the trackpad can also be unscrewed and replaced without having to do it with the keyboard, which was expensive before. And then the batteries have these pull tabs where you can kind of lift them up and then yank them to be able to release these batteries. So they're very easily accessible. I'm not gonna go ahead and uh, pull the whole thing up here, but we have all that room. And the batteries themselves, uh, they don't need to be tapered anymore and stacked with different shapes because of this redesign that is more boxy, that gives us a lot more internal volume. So the batteries are larger, plus they're cheaper and easier to manufacture just this regular shape. And these insides are very long, so Apple is making the most use of the internal space. Now with that, on the side here we have CNC little sections with what looks like magnets on both sides and then on the front and I'm guessing that is to hold the lid provide some tension and then once you uh, open it up then you can easily release it and open it with one hand which is really nice with MacBooks and this whole section here at the top is the actual computer it is so slim it looks like it has this kind of a metal cover on it and then this sticker over the top I don't know how much that draws heat we will be doing a thermal test video and then probably see if we can add one of those thermal pads that we did before that really helped the M1 MacBook Air. So make sure you're subscribed. But what interests me the most is this little door, this little hatch right here that has a screw that allows you to access something underneath it. So let's go ahead and open this thing up and see what's inside. That was a tiny screw there. I saw this kind of lift up. Let's go ahead and see if we can get underneath here. Oh, it actually shifted here. That's not good. Let's pull this back. Looks like I actually might need to slide out the other way. Maybe it's an upgradable SSD? <laughs> no, I'm just joking, absolutely not. But let's see what it is. All right, it's coming off. And what is that? I don't know what that is. Is it a ribbon cable? It does look like some sort of cable and it's folded there. So maybe you need to access that to be able to unplug something. I'm not really sure, but I definitely don't wanna mess it up. So it looks like if we wanna see the SSDs or the SSD, we have to take this thing apart further. I don't know, Vadim, what do you think? Should we keep going? 100%. Or should we man. stop here? Of course we're doing it. <laughs> we haven't even turned this thing on. This is Max Tech, man. This is what we yes, do. this is Max Tech. We did take apart two Max Studios all the way and put them back together, and both of them worked. So let's go ahead and first off, peel this sticker. All right, here we go. I got under the edge there. We could start peeling. And we have seen these kind of stickers before. I'm pretty sure it's this material, like not just to help cool it, because uh, we have this metal casing we can see right away. So the heat's transferring from the chip to this metal casing, but just probably to make sure it doesn't melt because uh, this spot is gonna get really hot without a fan. All right, look at that. It is actually changing. We do have a thermal pad of sorts. Now I'm not gonna touch that pad itself. I don't wanna mess up any of um, whatever coating is there. I'm gonna do this very carefully so we don't damage it and we can still attach it afterwards. All right, and it looks like we have some chips over here, probably some power chips, and the pad actually has another sticker on there similar to what they used to cover this that is stuck on. So they just put this pad over everything. All right, we have some more chips underneath here, and it's interesting how this metal top cover has that cut out. So I'm guessing that they don't want the heat from the M2 chip to transfer to the top of those chips. So it looks like we're not gonna be able to see the M2 chip because this metal cover is covering the whole thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and place this back down carefully and we'll have to remove that whole top plate. So that's sealed up well and it looks like on this side as well, it's just completely covered other than probably another power chip over here with this case. So let's go ahead and remove it. Thankfully, it looks like we don't have to remove the ports to get the motherboard out. Like on the Mac Studio, there's plenty of space. All right, that was a lot of tiny screws and ribbon cables with covers. And now we can actually unscrew the whole motherboard and the plate here. Uh, we have some smaller screws here in the center and then some larger ones on the outsides. It looks like some of these screws are holding the cover 
For example, these ones here in the back, now it's literally lifting up, while other ones are holding the motherboard down to the chassis. So I don't wanna take the motherboard. All right, so it looks like this is a dual layer cover, two separate parts of metal, some of which just grips onto the side here. So we lifted up this whole section here, but then it doesn't really wanna give, and we don't wanna risk damaging any thermal things, uh, if any heat spreaders, anything like that. So I went ahead and I unscrewed uh, more of the screws, and it looks like the motherboard is actually only this section right here. Underneath there, there's, I don't know if it's either just a straight pad with some cables, uh, but the motherboard is tiny in this thing. All right, we got the display cable disconnected from the motherboard. It's crazy, there's some tiny screws on here that Apple's never used before that none of the iFixit uh, can't get small enough. It's just Apple does not want you to touch that and damage it. And now, let's get this out of the way. And bam, here is our whole motherboard assembly. Now here you guys could see, good thing we didn't bend it. It might either be a stamped piece of metal it could have some kind of a vapor chamber thing in there, but uh, it is super thin. Now the bottom of this has nothing at all. It's just completely covered. All right guys, we have done it. That was extremely difficult. Took a ton of time. Let's take a look. Okie dokie. Oh. <laughs> all right, so this oh is the whole computer. Wow. That is an insane amount of chips. No way. Everywhere. Obviously, they condensed it from a MacBook Pro that has a much larger motherboard stuff spread out to everything being right here in one chunk. Now, what do we see? Taking a closer look at this motherboard, we have this Apple chip right here that looks really cool. Uh, let us know if you know what that is. Now right above that, we have this chip that looks kind of like a NAND chip, but it is not one of those. We actually looked it up and it is an ultra wide band chip. This might be the first MacBook that has one of these. And I don't even know if Apple mentioned this machine having one. So it might be unlocked in the future for different things like AirTags. And we made a video on AirPods Pro 2 that Apple could use ultra ultra wideband to get lossless wireless audio. That is super cool. And then here on the left hand side, unfortunately you guys see that empty slot right there. This is the base 256 gig model, so we do only have one NAND chip. Apple could have spent a little bit more money, put a second one in and uh, made it just as good as the M1 was, but they didn't. Of course, if you get 512, it will have two. And right here in the center, we have Apple's M2 chip with the RAM right here on the side. Now we do have thermal paste here, and then if we take a look at uh, this whole casing that was a huge pain to remove, I would not recommend it. Uh, we didn't damage it or anything, we were extremely careful. Uh, but we have thermal paste right here as well. So this is uh, a vapor chamber heat transfer cooling system that attaches. You have different pads here. Now it's super thin and based on what we've seen online as far as thermal testing uh, and thermal imaging, it doesn't do much because the hot spot is still by far here and uh, the results that we've seen don't look too promising. Now of course we are gonna do our own in-depth thermal testing, not only running in a bench, we're gonna look at the frequencies. We're gonna look at how much those frequencies slow down and how long it takes. And what if you do graphics and CPU tasks like you do a lot of times with 3D rendering, gaming, video editing, photo editing, those tasks, how much will it slow down? Not just one benchmark. So thankfully all of this is still intact. Now what I am gonna be doing is I'm gonna take off this thermal paste and I'm gonna reapply another thermal paste that is very similar to Apple's. We've done thermal testing in the past with different pastes. Uh, we know the Arctic Silver is very close as far as the temps. So we're gonna make sure it's a great seal, that everything is working properly, get this thing back together, and then we can continue our videos and testing. So there you guys go. We now officially have visual proof that this does also have a single NAND chip, meaning it's gonna read and write at about 1400, so slower than a $600 M1 iPad Air. In 
and you do want to upgrade to 512. We see all our chips, including the M2. It does have some better thermal engineering, way better hardware engineering. Everything is easily replaceable and accessible other than this top cover. So Apple did do a really good job. Uh, so make sure you guys click that subscribe button above to see the thermal test. And then we're going to do comparison to the M1 MacBook Air and other machines. Let us know your thoughts down below. This has been Max, and we will see you in the next video.